Good morning, everyone. I think we can go ahead and get started today. Uh, my name is Alex. I'll be conducting today's webinar just like I do each and every time. Uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you that are joining us again, welcome back. Um, this week we are continuing with our 2018 edition of Building a Website. Uh, the first two episodes we talked about kind of getting started, ordering up your, your site, picking your template. Uh, last week we talked about fonts and colors. And this week we're actually going to start applying some of those things to to our website and make some actual changes to it. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we're covering today in a nutshell. For those of you that are here for the first time, let's do a quick rundown of how it works. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you should see an option for Q&A as well as an option for chat. So if you have a question um, regarding your website, uh, you can submit it via the Q&A portion. Um, that gives me a running total of all the questions that come in, make sure I can answer them all. Um, if it's related to what we're talking about, I'll do my best to answer it uh, while we're going over things. Um, but if you have a question that's unrelated to today, today's topic, that's perfectly fine. We do set aside some time at the end for just general Q&A questions. Um, so you can go ahead and submit your question and we'll set it aside um, towards the end. So. Um, in the chat window, Liz, you had a, a domain question. You can certainly submit your question anytime, and we can cover it during our, our Q&A portion if that's okay. Um, you also see an option for chat. So if you have any, uh, any comments or anything like that um, throughout the webinar, if I'm going too fast, if you'd like me to cover something uh, in a little bit more detail, by all means, let me know. Shoot me a chat uh, a message and... and I'm happy to help with that. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, utilize the Q&A portion. Um, it's a lot easier for me to keep track and make sure that I can get to everyone's question. Um, so the question that just took, that just came in through the chat about um, the photo stuff, if you could submit that via the Q&A, that would be awesome. And we'll actually cover that today so you'll kind of see a little bit of insight on how to take care of that problem. So. Um, our webinar is also being recorded, just like it is each and every week. Um, so if you happen to uh, need to hop off or something to that effect, don't worry about it. You can come back and watch the video at any time later on this afternoon. Um, you can find the videos in our education portal, which is just ineducation.liveeditplatform.com. Um, also, when you're logged into your site, there's a really easy way to get to it that I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, if you click into the solutions section and scroll down, you'll see our webinars right here. And you can click into that and you can see all of our different episodes. So this is the first one, this is this week, or last week's, and then this week's will be right above that at the top uh, later on this afternoon. So uh, with that said, again, this week we're going to be covering making some changes to our website, um, changing backgrounds, colors, and so forth like that. Um, so that's what we're going to cover. Uh, for those of you that joined in last week, uh, you know that we had Jolene from our design department uh, joining in. She's also here with us again this week to provide some commentary and assistance with it. Um, so if you have any questions relating to design that you want to direct towards Jolene, certainly feel free to, to submit those and we'll do our best to answer. So with that said, uh, we will move forward with our site. So Again, if you have any questions, submit it via the Q&A, and we'll do our very best to answer them for you. So. All right, so before we get started, this is our website that we're using. Um, we didn't really talk about it a ton last week, but we chose the Health Coach Pro template. So this is the website that we're using. Uh, we haven't made any changes to it. We did a couple of things with fonts last time, um, but we'll do a little bit more with that today. Um, so by the end of today, our homepage is going to look completely different. So that's our, our kind of our subject for today. Um, so I'm just going to kind of start at the top and work our way down. Um, and again, if you have any questions or if you want me to slow down a little bit or cover something again, by all means, just let me know. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to log into my site. So up at the top of your pay, your web browser, you're going to see your URL. Um, to simply log in, just type in backslash login. Be taken to your login screen and you want to use the email that you use to sign up for your website as well as the password that you set when you created your site. Once you log in, you'll see your toolbar up at the top and we are ready to begin. So, 
All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to start actually doing some work. So last week we talked about fonts and colors and, uh, excuse me, I'm a little on the stuffy side this morning. Uh, we talked about fonts and colors. Um, and if you remember, we had a lovely little page from Jolene that I'll pull up that talked about some of the different fonts that we can use together and how they're a little bit more complimentary as far as the look and, and whatnot. Um, and I'm actually going to use this lovely little um, configuration here with Montserrat and then the book Antiqua. So that's my font choices for our website just because I like the look for that. So the first thing I'm going to do before we start moving into making actual changes to the site is I'm going to go into my design tab and I'm going to set up my font choices. So I'm going to do that by going to the design tab, clicking on the typography section, and I'm going to go in and adjust some of these things now and save them. So when I actually start making changes to the site, I don't have to worry about applying those font changes or anything like that because I've already set them up here. So, oh, excuse me. All right, so the first thing that we have set up is we have our site name, which we're using in the Montserrat uh, font size with the 24 font and this blue color. This is the color that Jillian set up last week. Um, I'm not going to worry about a tagline because we're not going to be using one. Uh, when we get to our main text, which is going to be areas in our, t in our uh, website that just have normal text, I'm going to set that for the Montserrat font. I'm also going to leave the size the way it is. I don't see any need to change that at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our heading is also set from last week's with the font choice and the and the sizing that we want. The only difference that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to set my color to white. Um, move down to heading two. Heading two. For this font here, right now it's listed as blank. What that means is that's the default setting for the template that we chose. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for right at the moment, and you'll see why when we get to actually editing the text. I do want to adjust the font size a little bit. I want to make it a little bit smaller. And I want this color to also be white. Now when we get down to heading three, I'm going to also set this to be that same default section there. Um, the, the font size I'm going to be fine and the color scheme I'm going to change based on the, the image that I'm going to be using here for my feature. Um, so for right now, last thing I'm going to do is set up my heading for fonts. And that's all I'm going to do for fonts right now. I'm not going to be using a, a heading 5 or a heading 6 at the moment, so I think I'm okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. Alex, do we want to point out that the site name and the tagline, those items are technically controlled from the dashboard of your website in the site settings. So the site name will appear in your website if you're not using like a graphic logo. Right. Just so you're aware of that. Yep. So what she's talking about here is the site name and our tagline right here, which if you go into your site settings, and this is the same screen that we saw when we built out our, where we ordered up our website. Your site name is also your business name right here. Uh, we started with building a website, so I'm actually going to change this to our example business name, which is Organic Health Coaching. If you want to do a tagline, you can have some sort of tagline, um, whatever fits your business, and that's actually going to appear right underneath your business name. So for this example, I have a business name and a tagline. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my settings. And then we'll hop back to the home page. And then I'll just give it a quick refresh here. And on the Health Coach Pro template, we talked about this when we ordered up our website. Your site name and your business name show up on your menu. So when you click over here on the menu button and open it up, this is where it shows up. It's kind of hard to see because of our toolbar here, but there's our business name, Organic Health Coaching, and there's our tagline that shows up right below it. Now if we go back into our design tab and go to our typography, and if you hover over this, you can click and move it out of the way. And if we changed our 
site name settings or our tagline settings, you can see that being reflected where those things are located here on your on your menu. So if you don't happen to have um, a logo designed, you can still do something that looks nice within the typography tab in the design style editor to kind of create your own um, type logo if you don't have something that's designed already. Certainly. And just keep in mind that it does, you are limited to this, this area. So for this particular template and the Zest template as well, because it's, it may have the similar left side menu, you only have this small area to work with. Um, I've had coaches that have asked, you know, well, I want to have my, my business name or my tagline is several lines long. And you could keep doing that, but you have to keep in mind, it's, it's confined to this space so the more words you have, the smaller it's going to start getting. And then it's going to be that much more difficult for people to read. Um, so it's definitely something that you want to kind of experiment with. And that's one of the nice features about being able to, to go into your typography setting and adjust some of these things. So if we look at the tagline, because it's a little bit easier to see, you know, we can adjust these sizes and you can see them actually reflecting here. And you kind of can can go off of that and and base what you want your settings to be you know based on how you have it looking you know once you start getting a little bit larger you see that it drops out into a second line so just definitely something to consider when you're making those changes all right so with our site now what we're going to do is I'm going to actually add in a couple images that we're going to be using today so I'm gonna hop into my file manager, which I go to my dashboard right up here and click into my file manager. Now when you get here for the first time, you're gonna see this little tour that comes up and you can click show me how it works and it'll walk you through step by step on how to create folders and upload files and so forth. Um, you can also do that anytime by simply clicking this little rocket ship right up here and it'll start that tour over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the settings to add a new folder. And I'm just going to call it building a website and click OK. And there you can see my folders there. So I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to click upload file. And I actually have a bunch of images and logos that I've, I've already went through and, and talked and selected and everything. I'm just going to pull them from my desktop and upload them. Very simple, and you'll see all the process going through and uploading these images. Um, we talked a little bit last week about images and where to get them. Uh, we have a wonderful help guide in our portal, which if you click in the question mark when you're logged into your site, um, you can go right to the portal. Um, if you do a search for stock images, if you can type properly, you'll see our, our help guide, which is called Resources for Finding Stock Images. Um, this is a wonderful list of websites that provide free images that you can use um, for your website, for your Facebook page, whatever, um, and not have to worry about copyright or license or anything like that. Um, it's a really great resource to utilize, to take advantage of. Uh, many of the pictures that I'm using for this particular webinar and our homepage here came from those. Um, you'll also see there are a few that came from ThinkStock. ThinkStock provides options to pay for individual image license or you can get an overall image um, license subscription. Um, so we have a little bit of, of both in here. But otherwise, the other images that don't say ThinkStock actually all came from, from one of the sites on the list. So. Uh, Vicki asks, how did you add that folder? Um, again, when you're in your file manager, just click on the settings and click add. And then you can choose where you want your folder to go if you want it to be inside one of these other folders. Otherwise, just give your folder a name and click OK. And once again, you can click on this rocket ship icon right up here in the upper right corner and click show me how it works and it'll walk you through that. So it'll walk you through how you can go through and do all those, those things as well. So now if I click on my 
building a website folder. You can see in my current location, it says my files and then building a website. So these are all the images that I have in that folder. So now that we have that image, I'm going to hop back to my home page. And the very first thing that I'm going to do on this particular page is I'm going to change my background image. Uh, we get a lot of people that pick this specific template just because they like this, this big um, image here that you can have um, in this section. Um, and that's great. That's fine. That's fantastic. And we have a lot of people that pick this particular template because they like that particular image which also is really nice, but you have to keep in mind that we have thousands of health coaches and we have hundreds that pick this template and we have hundreds that pick this template to use that image. So you can leave it if you wanted to, um, but you definitely want to think about, you know, personalizing, customizing, changes out your website so you can help, help it stand out from everyone else. Uh, Liz has a question. How do you select an image to upload? Do you mean in your file manager? When you do that, there's a button that says upload and you have the option to just drag the files from your desktop into this checkbox folder or you can click this green button here and find them within your website. And that's how you upload them. Uh, Melanie says I can use my own images. Absolutely. We'd like to see you use your own images so they are unique to you and speak about your story and your business. Yes, definitely. I mean, even if you're picking images from any of these, these sites, uh, like you'll see the images that we're going to be using today are relevant to kind of what we're, how we're setting up our business. So I'm not just picking images that I think look nice. I'm picking images that I think look nice and are relatable to what my message for my health coaching practice is. So, um, Faye asked, where can I check if my business name I came up with is being used? Again, if you're not, if you don't have a graphic logo, your business name will show up at your, um, on your menu. So, for example, the business name is showing up over here on the health coach pro menu or template. If we look at some of the other templates, for example, the forks and spoons template, your business name is going to show up in the upper right hand corner or upper left hand corner. Foodie Bonanza is going to show up right up in the top of the, of the middle of the page. Zest is going to be over in the upper left hand corner on the menu, just like with Health Coach Pro. Organic, if you don't have a graphic logo, it's going to show up over here where the organic logo is. Uh, Health Coach Pro we just talked about, and Saver, it's going to be over on the left-hand corner. So, uh, Diana says, can you customize your homepage image? Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do right now. All right, so back to our site. I've uploaded my images to my file manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode. And what I want to do is close my menu here. When I'm in edit mode, I'm going to change my, my background image for my feature container. So that's this section right here. And I'm, to do that, I'm gonna click on the blue notepad icons. And you'll see that the, when you go into edit mode, each one of the, the containers and sections has a, an, a blue notepad icon. We call that our CSS editor. Um, what that allows you to do is customize different aspects of each one of those boxes. So on our homepage, this big, image with the blueberries is in our feature container. So when we click on the box for the feature container, you'll see the box will pop open. It'll tell you which container you're talking about up on the top. And since there's a background image on it, you can see that that's the image that we're using. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace the image that I have here. If I wanted to remove it, I can simply click remove and it'll remove that image. And I could set a background color if I wanted to. Um, in this case, I want to just replace the image. So I could just click on add background image. It takes me to my selecting image window where I can find the folder in my file manager and I could select the images that I've uploaded. Um, now, 
question came in is what size image should we be downloading? I noticed they have options ranging from small to extra large. Jolyn, do you have a really good answer for that? Um, well, it depends on how you're going to use that image. If you want it to be a background, like um, similar to the image that Alex is inserting right now, if you want that to take up the full width of your browser, um, download a larger file. If you want something um, that's just like an, an accent on your page, maybe you can get away with downloading a smaller image. But a general rule of thumb is you should never really need an image that's larger than 2,000 pixels wide on your website. Um, one reason is the file size on an image that's any larger than that is just, it's bigger than what you need. And that's just a lot of information um, trying to get shoved through that pipeline when someone is loading your website. That's information that they need to to download in order to see your page, but you know their browser window is a, a specific size. And if you, um, let's say for example, your browser window is a thousand pixels wide across, and you download an image that's 5,000 pixels wide, that person is never going to see that image larger than a thousand pixels anyway. So it's just, it's kind of a waste. And to give you a rule, you can see when I click here, you can see on the kind of in the middle there, the width of my screen right now is just over a thousand pixels. So that will give you a little bit of a size comparison. So what you're seeing now is a thousand pixels wide. So <clears throat> now in relation to what Jolene was saying, the images that I added to my file manager I downloaded from you know my list of resources beforehand and I actually went into a, a different program outside of the site and resized them based on on that um, kind of what Jolene was just talking about um, because I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to place the images on the site I generally kind of stuck with the so the same general time or size range of around 1900 to 2000 pixels wide, just to ensure that it's never gonna be larger than I need and I can always make it smaller if I have to. So, um, Andrea kind of just asked the same question. Uh, she missed that, what size would you recommend for images? Um, to kind of summarize what Jolene said, it's a little bit, it, depending on what you want it to use, um, but what did you say about the good rule of thumb, Jolene? Um, that generally I wouldn't recommend using an image that's larger than 2,000 pixels wide. Right. So hopefully that, that helps with that question. So, so on my, in my file manager, the image that I'm actually going to use is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Now this one is a little bit different. If I click on my, my image here, this gives me a little bit of a, summary of it and I'll actually go in my file manager and show you the image before I place it. This one's a little bit different because it's a vertical image and it, generally for a background image you want something that's hor uh, um, horizontal or not yeah horizontal landscape view um, generally works a little bit better but for the way that I wanted this image to be placed this actually works out very well for me um, and a lot of it People ask all, all the time about choosing background images and, and everything. And honestly, at least for me, it's a lot of it's trial and error. You pick an image that you want, you make sure the size is correct, and you place it. And sometimes it looks the way that you want it to look, and sometimes it doesn't. You know, that's just kind of the nature of how it, how it goes. Um, there isn't, because you're adding a background, you don't have a lot of flexibility of how you want to actually place that image because it's a background. So it's no different than using, applying a background to your computer or even to your phone. You know, it's, you're, you're limited. You can pick the image and sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. So. <clears throat> Andrea says, can you alter the dimensions or size of the image? Um, Yes, you can. When you actually, in, once you add the image to your file manager, you do have the ability to edit 
you can click on the edit feature and you have the option to go in and resize it and crop it if you need to so um, you can actually see more information about that in our education portal um, you can do a search for images you can browse through uh, we actually have a video guide that talks exactly how to resize images so this is what that talks through um, it's a walkthrough of how to go about doing that in your file manager um, we also have a couple of webinars that are devoted strictly to pictures talks about the different ways to add them and place them and so forth so you can see a little bit more detail than what we're going to kind of cover now All right, so now that I have my image, like I said, I've already resized it, so I don't need to worry about having to adjust the size. So I'm just gonna click accept, and there's the preview of my image. Now, next up is my settings. The image size that I'm using is cover, and cover ensures because your website's responsive, meaning it conforms to the screen size being viewed, cover means that your image will expand and contract in the appropriate dimensions to make sure that your image is always covering the screen and it'll optimize it as much as possible so your image doesn't lose quality or or look terrible in any sense like that so i like to use cover i know jolene you like to use cover a lot mm -hmm. so i just generally stick with that one just because it, it kind of covers all of your bases um, for image scroll um, if you want to have your image scroll set where you can do a snazzy little feature like so where your image like this image right here stays in the back stays fixed as you scroll through the page you have that option um, you can do that I would just advise using fixed backgrounds yep. with caution because sometimes they don't play nicely on mobile devices yes. I know um, on iOS, um, on Apple devices, fixed backgrounds on mobile can be an issue. So yeah. um, it works well if you're using something that's um, a pattern or a solid color or something kind of abstract. But when you're focusing on a picture like this, mm -hmm. um, it might not be the best um, situation because it can pixelate that image. Yeah. So and to kind just, of show you what, what we mean by that, if I were to shrink this down and give you kind of what it would look like on a mobile view, if I scroll down, you'll see that I lost a very good portion of that image because it doesn't conform properly. But if I scroll down to my other images, they did conform properly based on, you know, what I'm, I'm viewing them as. So. Well, and also on a, on a mobile device, um the site will know that you're not looking at it on a computer. It will mm -hmm. recognize that it's on a mobile device. Yep. And iOS does, it sometimes does blow that image up and it becomes pixelated and it doesn't look great. So yep. just a um, word of caution when using fixed backgrounds. They're great, but use them wisely. Right. And be sure to test your website on your phone. Exactly. <laughs> so for my option, I'm actually going to set it to none or the default, which is just a, a scroll feature or a, fi or a none feature where the image will stay, will scroll with the website as I'm using it. So, um, and then image position is kind of the setting the focal point for your image. Generally with a background image, because the image is so large, when you shift the focal point, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, you can always experiment and try it out and see what, what fits best for you. Um, and in this case, I'm just gonna leave it for the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my change. I also like to, when I'm done um, saving my change, I always refresh my page. Um, on, I'm using Google Chrome, so my refresh button is up in the upper left-hand corner. I think Safari is in the upper right-hand corner. Um, I like to do that just to ensure that when I'm working on my site, I'm seeing the most recent up-to-date version of my page. Um, you also might encounter issues where you save a change and you refresh it and it doesn't go into effect and you're not seeing your change like this. I just refresh my page and my image is not there. What happens is web browsers do a thing called caching your page. What they do is they store a version of your page 
and they utilize that when you access it to ensure faster loading. So it's kind of like saving a, a brief history of what you were just visiting. So when you go back, it loads that much faster, which for surfing the internet is fantastic. But for working on your website, it's, it's really kind of a pain. So when I refresh my page, if I hold down my shift key while I do it, it actually refreshes my page and it also clears my browser cache. Now that trick works with Google Chrome. I believe it works with Safari. I'm not sure if it works with Firefox or Internet Explorer, but we also have a help guide in the portal where you can type in cache and it'll show you the different um, steps for each of the different browsers, more popular browsers on how you can go about doing that. But you see when I cleared my cache and refreshed my page, my changes are there. So um, it's, it's something that we get a lot of questions on on a regular basis. You know, when in doubt, refresh your page. If you're still not doing it, try clearing your browser cache and you should start seeing your changes as soon as you save them. So, uh, Cheryl commented, um, I had a hard time getting logged in. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the first 30 minutes or so. Will I be able to watch again? Absolutely. Um, if you miss the beginning part or if you miss any portion or if you have to hop off. Remember, you can always go back and watch the video in our solution section of our education portal. If you scroll down, there's our webinar section here, and all of our videos are in there. This one will be up there later on this afternoon. It's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so you can go back and rewatch it, uh, catch up on anything that you missed um, at any point in time. So. All right, so I've changed my background image for that specific um, part of my page. I like the way that it looks. Um, and the reason that I did that is because when I place this background image, I'm going to use this image to set my color scheme. Uh, we talked a little bit about that last week. I'm a big fan of basing my color scheme on the pictures that I'm using on my site. I like this page. I like this image. I kind of like the the tone and the feel of it. So I chose to kind of model my color scheme off of that per this particular um, image. And we talked a little bit last week about a wonderful tool that we have available to um, Google Chrome users and Firefox users called Colorzilla. Um, and Colorzilla is a lovely little application. If I could type today. Um, it's a wonderful application that you can get for Chrome and Firefox. Um, you simply click on it. You can add it to your browser window. Um, it's a little add-on tool. Mine is right up here. When I click on it, I have the option to select um, a custom color. But the real feature that I use it for is I can pick a color from a page. And you can do that from an image. So on this particular page, if I wanted to, say, capture, you know, kind of the bluish tint of this picture, I can say pick color from page. You'll see a little sample box up here. And as I hover over the different areas, you'll see the color number in the middle will change based on what I'm hovering over. So I can kind of find that proper color scheme that I'm looking at. And when I find the one that I want, if I can actually find the one that I used, When I find it, I can click on it and it'll save that color for me. So it'll say this color is copied to my clipboard. And then I can go into my design tab. And when I go to my color section, this is where I can start applying that color. So if I wanted to set the color scheme for my menu, which is right over here, I can click on this box and the information that I copied, I can just paste it back in and it'll give me that color. So um, that's what I did beforehand um, for our actual um, webinar today. I actually ended up picking a color that was a little bit more on the gray scale. Um, so instead of wasting time going through and, and finding that specific color, I'm just gonna cheat and copy and paste it from my notes here. So this is the kind of the color that I wanted to use. I can go ahead and click select 
and there is my menu color. Uh, my font for my menu I set here as well, and I want that to be the same settings that I'm using for the rest of my site. So I'm using the Montserrat font. You can see that it changes how I have my menu font set up, and I can adjust the size and stuff here. Um, I'm actually going to make it a little, little bit bigger than normal, but not too big. And then I can set my color for the text, and I like the white. I think the white looks very nice against the gray here. Um, the item background color is if you're hovering over these specific items, that's the color that it shows. And that is my background hover color right here. And I want that to be white. So when I do this, I can see the, the highlighting thing. Um, I want to adjust my text hover color when I do that. And that one I'm actually going to use a, a very similar color that I just took from the image. So that same color that we have here. So you see when I hover over it, my text is that matches that color scheme. And then for the mobile menu icon, that is this little menu listing right over here in the upper right hand corner. On the Health Coach Pro, that is how you access your menu. On any other template, when you're viewing your site on a mobile device, this is the, the button that the user needs to click to access that menu. So this is where you can set that color. Um, on this particular one, I'm actually going to set it to this little light blue color that Jolene set last week. Um, I can just kind of like the way that that one looks there. So that's what I'm going to use for that specific um, color. Uh, Cheryl, the second part of your question, can you submit that via the Q&A portion, please? So I can make sure um, to answer it during our Q&A session at the end. Um, next up, we have our submenu, and our submenu are these pop-out menus here. Um, on other templates, just the drop-down menus. Um, as long as I'm sitting in here, I want to make sure to set that color as well. So I want my background color, which is now currently blue, I want that to be white. Like so. And I want my item text to be this kind of grayish color. And my background color I'm going to leave. Um, the text hover, when you hover over it, should be white, like so. And I'm actually going to change it up a little bit so when I hover over one of those options, it actually changes the color to this. So I have it looking like that. Looks nice, Alex. Thanks, Jolene. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save my changes just because I've made a few changes. I want to save them to make sure that I don't lose anything. Um, and again, I just like to give my site a refresh when I'm done just to make sure everything is doing what I want it to do. Everything's doing what I want to do, so we're good. And I can continue with my color settings here. Um, as I scroll down through here, um, I do want to change my header section on my main content area sections I'm not going to do anything with I'm gonna leave them the way they are um, because I am going to be setting those options in the actual section on the site when I start making changes um, just keep in mind anything that you do in your style settings whether it's a background or a color or typography will apply to everything through your site uh, so it'll apply on every page um, everywhere when you use the blue notepad icons on your on your page, these things, these will apply to that specific area on that specific page. So this background image that I changed only exists on this page and only in that con that container. So the blue notepad icons let you customize every single thing on every individual page, whereas your settings apply to your entire website. finish up here so I'm not gonna do anything with the header or the main content but I do want to do the footer which is down at the bottom of the page down here um, that is I'm actually going to leave that same color because I think it's a nice contrast 
Um, the text is currently set to white, which works really nice because it's easy to read, easy to see, and so forth. Um, we're going to leave the links for now. We'll get a little bit more into that as we go um, into next week. Um, background color for, and for button settings. The button settings actually refer to buttons that you have on your site, um, like this schedule a free consultation button, um, this one here, the read more buttons for the blog. Um, those settings for those button colors and how they function is actually set up in your, your button section of the colors. Um, if you scroll a little bit down, you'll see form buttons. That's the same thing, but those only apply to the submit buttons and sign up buttons that are parts of actual forms. So that would affect this sign up button here. Um, so they're two different, different settings that you can set. So in this case, I'm going to adjust my, my button settings to kind of match what we have for, um, for the rest of the site. Um, I'm going to set my background color to this kind of a color, but I'm actually going to make it a little bit lighter by adjusting. This is the, the transparency setting for that particular color. If I go all the way to the left, you'll see that right down here, my button, um, that color becomes more and more faint. So you can kind of adjust the transparency or the intensity of that color with this slider down here. Um, this last little bit here is actually like the percentage. So I'm at 69% of that color. If that kind of helps make things a little bit clearer. Um, so for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit on the faint side and leave it about 53%. Text color, I want to keep it at white because I have a background color that's a little bit darker. I want to make sure that my button, my text color is bright enough to be able to read it. Um, I do want my hover color to change a little bit, and I'm going to actually change it to kind of our, our bluish color here. So when someone hovers over it, it highlights in a, in a way that is, it lets them know that they're hovering over it. So I, I kind of like that standout feature. Uh, Alexis says, what's the difference between form buttons and regular button settings? settings? Again, the form button settings affect only the buttons on forms. The other button settings affect every other button. So the form set form button settings only apply to buttons for sign up that are parts of forms. Uh, Alyssa asks, is Colorzilla a website or an option in Chrome? It's an add-on that you can use for Chrome. It's a, it's an add-on It's an tool. extension. Yeah, they call them extensions. Um, so they're just little add-ons that you can apply to your browser. So, and again, it only works for Chrome and Firefox. So, um, so we have our hover color set. Um, if you wanted to do a border, you can. Um, I am doing a little bit of a border, um, matching the same color that I'm using for the, the background but I'm just going to drop the intensity down a little bit. Like so. And then if you wanted a, a hover color, you can, so. Uh, Vicky says, I do not have the yellow toolbars across, above the black one that you're using. You mean up here? That's because I'm using Google Chrome. If you're not using Google Chrome, it's not going to look like this. This is what my browser looks like. So um, you um, could have some everybody's preferences browsers, turned off. Yeah, yeah, and keep in mind that everybody's everyone's browser different. can be configured a little bit differently. So yep. you might not be seeing exactly what how like Alex's configuration. Yeah, so. and you can set up the different color schemes and so forth for that. Um, that's all going to be in your browser settings. Um, but again, if you're using Internet Explorer or Safari or Firefox, it's going to look different than this because every browser is different. So, <clears throat> okay, so that's going to take care of my button settings. So I, I like the way that my buttons look when I'm hovering over them. And the last thing I'm going to do for right now is my social media icons, which I haven't added any yet, but I'm going to here in just a moment. Um, for my social media icons, 
Every template has the option to add in social media icons and you can do that by adding the social media settings to your site settings. So I'm going to go ahead and quick save this. If I go into my site settings, if I scroll down here, we have our social media sections. And this is where you put in the URLs for your Facebook page, your Twitter account, your YouTube page, channel, Instagram, all those things that you have if you have them. And you can just add that information here. So I'm actually going to add in a couple just to give you an example of what they look like. like so, and you can come in and change it whenever you want to. I'm going to save my settings. Now when I hop back to my home page and go into my menu, you're going to see the social media icons right down here. And each one of them is just a link to those those URLs that you put in there. So I'm going to go back into my colors, move this out of the way, and I'm going to go down to my social media section, and I'm going to adjust those those color schemes. For the actual color, I'm going to use that same light blue color that we use for our mobile menu, right up here. Um, I think it just looks nice against this particular color that I have set for my menu. Um, the hover color I'm going to change up right now it's a little on the dark side so it doesn't really work for me I'm going to use the same hover color that I used for my buttons um, when you select your color oftentimes you'll see down here these are your more recent used color history so I can see that this is that color down here in the corner so I can select it um, you can also just copy this information directly from here and then I could go in and, and I could paste it there as well if I wanted to, just to ensure that I'm using the exact same one. So I click select and I can test it out by kind of hovering over that. And then if I'm happy with it, then I can go ahead and save my change. I can also adjust the size if I want to, if I want to make these bigger or smaller. Um, you don't get to, to adjust where they are, uh, but you can adjust the, the way that they look. So. Uh, I'm happy with my color settings for now. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes and go ahead and refresh my page and test it out to make sure that everything is working the way that I wanted it to and all my colors are matching. Okay. So now I'm kind of done the hard part with that um, and, and set up those colors. Like I said, that's, that's a lot of what we talked about last week. Um, if you didn't get a chance to join in last week and you want to learn more about setting colors and, and getting some helpful tips from Jolene on fonts and colors, you can definitely check out our webinar from last week where we go way more in-depth on that kind of stuff. Let's see, what are we doing? Um, okay. Looks like we are all caught up on related questions. All right, so now that we have our, our color set up, um, I actually want to add my own business, my own logo to my site. Um, right now I have in my settings, I don't have a business or an actual graphic logo. I have my business name. We talked about that at the beginning of the, of the webinar. Um, on the Health Coach Pro template, we talked about this when we first selected the template. A lot of people assume that this is the logo for this template. It is not. This is just an image. So it's just an image that's placed here. I'm actually going to delete that because I'm not going to use it. So your actual logo on this particular template is right over here. So um, there's two ways that you can add a logo. You can do so in your site settings by either dragging your logo from your desktop or clicking the browse button and finding the logo from your, your website. Um, another really easy way to do it is to actually just click on the area for your logo while in edit mode. So if I go into edit mode, I can click on the logo or my business name like so, and it'll open up this window as well. So what this is doing is right now it's showing me every image that's in my file manager. So if my logo is already uploaded, I can go ahead and select that logo. Um, I can also click on the Upload tab, 
and select that particular image just like I uploaded from the file manager before. Um, this is a nice way to do it because there's a little help, helpful tip over here that says for the best possible results use a 24-bit transparent PNG. Um, you can also use a GIF and JPEG format. Uh, be sure to use a clean optimized logo. Um, basically that's just saying what formats you can use. Um, we do generally get a lot of questions on logos. So Jolene, do you have any helpful tips for people on choosing a logo, sizing and so forth? Um, well, that's kind of a difficult question to answer because every site is different. Every logo is different. Um, I think maybe the most important thing is to make sure that you're starting with a good quality file. Um, if you have, if the logo file that you're trying to insert onto your site is really small, it's going to stay small. The system won't let you size that up um, because your logo will be pixelated. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to, definitely don't start with a pixelated um, logo file or anything that's blurry. Um, you know, make sure that you are starting with a clean file that looks good because it's going to represent you. Um, a PNG file is the preferred format because there's no background on it. So if you do happen to change the background color of your menu or, or your header, um, you'll be good. Um, but you can definitely use uh, a GIF or a JPEG format as well, but that will have a background color associated with that file. So be aware that that will show up when you insert your logo. Yep. So on for this particular site, I actually had um, Jolene create a, a logo for me. Um, I liked the basic premise with the Health, Health Coach Pro logo that was there. Um, so this is the, the actual Health Coach Professional logo that came with the template. Um, I liked the look of that, so I actually asked if she could mock up something for me, which she did, which is this lovely logo here. So this is the one that I'm going to be using. Um, Jolene, do you have an optimal size that I, we should be using for this other than just the, the normal size? Um, where you're inserting it in the menu? Yes. I would say probably you can try the 120 or 250. I'm not exactly sure um, the dimensions of that menu, so yeah. I would maybe. With the Health Coach Pro template, this one's a little bit different because, and the Zest template is the same, just because the area, like we talked about, is so small um, that honestly, I could pick the, the, the size of my image at 712 and it's not going to make it any bigger just because of the limitations for that area. Um, right, so keep in, keep in mind that um, a, a hor like a long, skinny, horizontal logo will not do well in this particular template. Yep. Because can, it's, it's going to be very tiny because it's going to have to fit in the available space. Right, and I'll just use a, an example. Um, of, of just a horizontal image so you can see. So this is a horizontal image. If I wanted to use that as my logo, because it's a horizontal image, it's going to be small um, because there's just that space limitation that we talked about before. Um, when you're on the, the other templates like Saver or Organic or Foodie Bonanza, you have a little bit more room and those logo areas are actually horizontal logo areas. Um, with the Health Coach Pro and the Zest, because of the way the menu is structured, those logos are more square. So you want to kind of take that into consideration when you're having a graphic logo um, on that site. <clears throat> uh, Kristen asked, is there a way we can create a free logo? Uh, there's a lot of resources online that you can look into for creating logos. Um, there isn't anything within the site that you can utilize to create a logo. Um, but like Jolene said, you have the option to use a JPEG or a GIF or anything like that. So you don't necessarily need to have something that is, you know, professionally designed and so forth. But it, it definitely helps um, to make your site look good. Uh, we also do have logo services available for you if you want to to go that route. But if you're looking for a free service or free options, you know, the, your best bet is to just search online and, and find one that you think works best for you. 
Right. And I think that having a professional logo on your website is going to make a world of difference because it's going to put you in a more professional light as well. So keep that in mind because a, a good looking logo you know, speaks volumes for your business. Yeah. Um, and now that I have my graphic logo, you'll see that my tagline shows up right below it. Um, you'll also see that the tagline isn't exactly centered. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of how the tagline works. There really isn't a way that I can customize how that tagline is going to be oriented with my, my logo. Um, one way that I could adjust that is I could adjust the size of my tagline. Like we talked about before, I could make it a little bit bigger so it looks like it's a little bit more centered so uh, again you're gonna kind of have to base that on how your logo sits and, and so forth if you want to use that and keep in mind you you definitely don't need to use the tagline too yeah so you can actually, just go into your site settings and just delete it and then you don't have to worry about it yep I'm actually going to remove the tagline because I don't want to use it so uh, Kristen says, are there pricing options available for logo creation? There are. Um, I'll put the link in the chat window here. On our Integrative Nutrition main page here, we have our services listing. Um, these are all the different services we can do, lo logo creation, um, copywriting, whatever it is that you're looking for. This is our, our kind of menu for that. Um, and you can look at the different options and the cost. And then if you have a question or you'd like more information, just simply fill out the form on the right-hand side, select the, the service or option that you're looking for more information on, and submit it, and then a member of our team will be in touch with you to kind of go over any questions that you have. So I'll put that link in the chat window. And keep in mind, with, with our logo services, we will create a logo for you that is yours. You'll be able to use it forever. You'll be able to use it for anything. We'll give you the necessary files if you want to use it for your business cards, Facebook page, whatever. Um, a lot of resources out there will only give you access to certain types of files. Um, we don't do that. It's your logo. You can use it for whatever you need to use it for. So, All right, so now that I removed my tagline, now when I go into my menu here, I don't have it. So it's just my logo and then my menu. So. All right, so now that I have my background image set and my color scheme set, I'm ready to actually just adjust the content on my site. Um, I know we're going a little on the long side today, which is fine, because what we're going to do to change the way that our homepage looks, honestly, is not going to take that much time. You're going to actually kind of be surprised at how little amount of time it actually does take to, to make these changes. So the first thing, I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. Um, I have my lovely background image that I have here, but I'm going to personalize some of this text and customize it a little bit to match what, um, what my kind of theme and, and feel is for my fictional health coaching practice. Um, real quick question came, do you re recommend if... Do you recommend if a logo needed to be copyrighted before using on your website? I don't know. Jolene, do you have any insight on that? Um, not really. I think there are a lot of legal hoops to jump through to get it actually copyrighted. Um, I mean, if that's an avenue that you want to pursue, you can certainly do that. But I... It's probably not necessary unless your practice or your name becomes very popular or large. Um, yeah, if you start becoming very successful and so forth, then, yeah. then sure. Um, but really, it's kind of kind of your own personal choice if you want to go down that yeah, road. Yeah, if that's an avenue that you'd like to go down, um, you know, I'm confident that there's tons of information on the internet about that. All right, you are very welcome. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into edit mode, and first thing I'm gonna do is this is our lead generation form. Um, 
the lead generation form is part of the IN Forms app. So if I click on this, you'll see the IN Forms application where you can choose from the different options. Um, the form here lets you do a giveaway for a free cleanse cheat sheet in exchange for, for contact information. And that's all well and perfectly fine, but I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to use it. And to not use it, I'm just going to remove it from the site. So I'm just going to click on it and delete it. Like so. Now keep in mind when you do delete something, there is no undo feature. So that's why there is the multi-step confirmation. Which think with things like the IN Forms application, because I deleted that form, it's not gone forever. I can easily replace it again by just taking the IN Form tool and placing it back on my page and choosing the lead generation form. But like I said, I'm not going to use that form, so I don't need excuse me, I don't need to have it for my site. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually go ahead and clean up this empty text box that we have here. Um, I'm going to edit this text. So when I click on edit, I can see there's my very my text, um, normal statement here, my H1 text, and this other text here. I'm actually going to delete this. So I just have my H1 text, which we talked a little bit about last week with our fonts. Your H1 or your heading one is the main statement or title for every page of your site. Every page should have one um, and only one, and your home page is no exception. So for me, what I'm doing on my page for my heading one is I'm just going to do a simple welcome to organic health coaching. That's it. Your, H, your H1 is the first thing that Google is going to look at when it's scanning your, your um, page and it'll take a look at every single page of your website. And your heading one should signal Google and it should basically like say what the page is or right. about. Yep, so that's why I'm just doing a very simple welcome to organic health coaching. Now you also see that with this text, it's, it's highlighted as bold. With this particular font, you're not necessarily going to notice the difference whether it's bold or not. Um, so I'm going to unbold it because I want it to just go along with my H1 settings. So if I save this and refresh it, uh, we set up our typography at the beginning of, the, of, our, of our time. So my heading one has the settings that I set. So for my heading one, it's in that font, it's in that size, and it's that color. Sandy had a quick question about the lead generation form. Okay, so this is something that comes up fairly often. There is an option with your forms, and I'll just tackle this really quickly. There's an option in your form settings to turn on what's called the CAPTCHA. So if I actually turn this on and save it real quick and then place that form on the page. And this is another reason why I don't necessarily want to use this form. When I place this form, the CAPTCHA is the verification here to prevent spam submissions and, and so forth like that. Um, you don't have to have it on your form. You can certainly go into your settings and turn it off uh, and not have it. But when you do that, you, you very well will likely receive numerous what are called spam form submissions where they're automated uh, robot submissions. You'll see them, they won't have actual names. It'll just be uh, random numbers and so forth. Um, and it's it's a pain to get them. We get people that get literally hundreds of them. Um, so that's why there's the CAPTCHA option because somebody has to actually enter in this information before they can submit the form. It Admittedly, it's not the most attractive thing in the world. Um, but you kind of have to weigh the cost and the benefit for that. So... Um, so Sandy's question, how do I remove those and still keep the form? Again, you can go into the settings and turn that CAPTCHA option off. Um, but just keep in mind that that will open up the possibility that you'll get those spam form submissions. So. <clears throat> uh, Kim asks, can you move the feature content boxes? No. Um, the areas that we have on our page are content areas and so forth. You cannot move them. Um, you can't resize them or anything like that. 
Um, they are where they are. They're coded into the templates. Um, you get so many different options to give you the options to rearrange your content however you see fit. Um, you'll see as we go through this, um, I'm going to move stuff just because I want it to be laid out in a different way. For example, now that I've added my business or my H1, I actually don't want it in this feature content. I don't want it to read across the top of my image like that. I actually want it over to the side like that. So, yeah, so the areas, the content areas are there and they're staying there, mm -hmm. but your content does not. Your content can move wherever. Yep. You and any like content area that you're not using, when you go out of edit mode, it's like they don't even exist. So they're just there for, for informational purposes, just kind of show you what's possible. And like I said, you can move it to wherever you want. Um, and it just gives you those that many more options um, for laying out your content. So, so I have my text here. Um, I also want kind of a, a secondary line of text. So I'm going to take my text tool and pop it in here. And this one, because I've already used my, my heading one, I want this one to be my heading two because I want this statement to be an important statement for people to see. So I want Google to make sure to index it. Um, and this one I'm actually going to set up to say kind of my mantra, I guess. Like so. And you can see it as I'm typing, you can see it actually show up in the, in the background here. Um, I want this to be centered. And with this particular, with my heading two, you'll remember, uh, if I save this real quick, you remember in our design tab, I left my settings for heading two as blank. And the reason that I did that is because the font choice that I want to use is not available in the typo in the, the settings that I have for typography. So these are the font choices I have here. Um, the, the, the font that I want to use isn't, isn't available in this section right now. Um, it's something that we're working to actually fix. But if I go into my text editor, I can highlight my text and I can go under formats and I can go to my font family and I'll have a different selection here um, and get a few more options here. And I actually want to use this book Antiqua. That's what I want to use for my heading two. So every time I place a heading two on my site, I'm going to need to go in and actually set this font on a manual basis. But I like the way that it looks. You see how it looks here and you'll see how it looks in the background. So that's the option that I want to do. Now I just set by font type. Um, I'm not changing the size. I'm not changing the color or anything else here. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And then all of the, the settings that I've applied in my typography, you know, as far as the font size and the color, those things will apply. All I did was actually just change the type of the font. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page. And we have this nice little look here. And the last thing that I want to do in this section here is I'm actually going to add in my logo, very similar to what we had on before we started changing it, where there was just that picture of, the, of our logo. Um, so I'm actually going to do it in a little bit different way. I could take my image tool and place it here. And then I could actually find my my logo that I wanted to use. Um, I would use a bl the black one and I can place the image like so. But when I do that, because I'm using the image tool, it places it very, very large um, because that's the image tool gives you the option to easily place an image in the optimal size. So because of where I'm putting it and so forth, this is the size that they're recommending. Um, you can technically go in and change your size if you wanted to. Um, you can select some pre-made sizes and so forth. I don't really want to monkey around with that. So we actually, there's actually another way you can add an image and you can do that with the text tool. So I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to place it right up here. And I can go under my insert menu and I can say I want to insert an image. When you do that, it gives you this information here and in the source button, 
our source box, this works very much like our image tool where I just click on the folder and it'll take me to my file manager. So I can browse through my folders just like I normally would and I can find that logo and I have the option to pick a, uh, a determined size for my picture um, which I want to use. Um, I'm actually going to click on the size here and I want to use the generic medium thumbnail. So I'm going to select that size. Um, you can give it your description so I can actually just say this is my logo. So, and then I'm just going to click OK. And there's my image, and you'll see it here. And the only other change that I want to do is I just want to adjust the alignment like that. And save it. Give my page a quick refresh. So then I have just kind of this nice little style and look to it. So that's what we have for that, that top section. Um, now what I'm going to do is just kind of work my way down. Um, the next section that we have here is our section one. And the sample content that comes with the site is really nice and helpful. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to rearrange it. So this, are you curious about health coaching can help you information? I like that, but I'm not going to use it. So for right now, I'm just going to drag it and move it somewhere else. So I can focus on the area that I'm going to use. Um, I'm actually going to take this text and use that. But what I'm going to do is edit a little bit. So I'm not going to use this about me text here. I'm going to erase that. What I'm going to do is, when I go into edit mode, you'll see that this text right here is one piece of text. So both of these paragraphs is, are one part of one text area. I'm actually going to change that and split them up. And to do that, I'm going to do a little thing called cheating. So if I go into the source code here, um, this gives me the technical jargon for all of that text to make it look exactly the way it wants to look. So I'm actually going to just copy all this information. And I can close out of this window, bring a new text area in, and I can put this new text area wherever I want. So for right now, I'm just going to put it right here. And I can paste in what I just copied. It's an easy way to make an exact copy of what I had there. And save that. Go ahead and refresh my page here. Now what I want to do is I actually want to split this in half. So in one section, I'm going to delete the bottom part. And in the other section, I'm going to delete the top part. Like so. So now I have that same stuff, but I split it up into two paragraphs. And the reason I did that is it gives me a lot more control over where I want to put this content. Okay, so what I'm going to do in section one is I'm going to take this first paragraph and I'm going to throw it up here. And then this one I'm going to use later on, so I'm just going to leave it right there. Now in section one, I want to make my text a little bit more readable. So I'm going to go in and click on my blue notepad icon for this section and I'm going to change my background color and this one I want to change to be a little light kind of gray and I can make it a little bit darker if I wanted to and just save it so it's super simple now I've added a little bit of a background color to it so it stands out a little bit more um, just like that um, I also want to go into this section here and add an image. So I'm going to take my image tool. And because this paragraph here, um, I'm actually going to, as I'm sitting here, I'm going to personalize this a little bit. 
Um, this, like I said, the starter content is really nice, but you can just change a few words in it to make it talk a little bit more about what it is that you do. So the first sentence is, it's rare for anyone to get an hour to explore their wellness goals with a trained professional. That's a great statement. I like it. I'm going to keep it. So, but as an integrative nutrition health coach, which I'm an IN certified health coach, so that works, um, I created a, sur a supportive environment that enables you to articulate and achieve your goals. That's another good st uh, statement. Throughout my education, I've been exposed to the most cutting edge dietary theories and so forth. Um, and that's perfectly fine. And and studied highly affecting coaching techniques to help you find the right lifestyle that works best for you. So I think that's a really nice introductory kind of paragraph. There's nothing about it that doesn't fit, you know, what my health coaching practice is going to be about. So I can 100% leave that just the way it is and save that. Um, some of these other paragraphs, we're going to customize it just a little bit. But that's a very good paragraph, so there's no need, no reason for me to save it or to change it. I'm going to take my image tool, but because that paragraph talks about you know healthy nutrition and so forth, I want an image that's going to complement that picture. So I'm going to actually pick this one here. Uh, when you use the image tool, it takes into account the original size of your picture and where you're going to place it. So it knows I'm going to place it in this section area three. So it'll say this is the optimal size. It's going to be the best quality, best sharpness, best optimized size for that picture. So I just click place this image and then it places that picture for me. Go ahead and refresh my page and then I have that that specific picture. Now I want to kind of adjust the way that that looks a little bit and make it a little bit more balanced. So I'm going to go into my edit mode and I'm actually going to adjust the settings for this picture. I like this picture, but I want to make it just a little bit smaller. So what I can actually do is I can click on the image here. And if I go into my advanced tab, there's a box called image settings. And I can actually adjust kind of what I want this image to do and how I want it to react with the content area. Right now it's set to be 100% width, which means it's going to fill up that entire content area. I want to make it a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to drop this down to 85%. Now when I do this, you can see the image in the background. When I click Save, all it does is it makes that image just a little bit smaller. Okay? And the last thing I want to do with that is you can see now that there's a little bit of space over here on the, on the right-hand side. I can click on that same Advanced button, and in the Container Settings, I have my alignment. Just like with your text editor, how you can center align things and right and left you can do that with your image as well and I just want it to be centered so now it's centered in that content area I'm gonna go over here now to my text and I want my text to be a little bit more balanced as far as how it looks when I'm not in edit mode uh, right now my text is up here I'd like to move it down so it's a little bit more centered and just kind of has a little bit of a better individual visual flow to it so one of the cool things about all of these blue notepad icons is you have a lot of options to go through and, and kind of customize things. So one of those options is what we call the spacing section. So if we click on our blue notepad icon and click on spacing, we have two options, margin and padding. The way that I categorize them is margin actually takes place outside of your area. So if you look at all the different areas, there's blue dotted lines that indicate the boundary for your content area. If I were to increase the margin for this area, and I'll do it just a little drastically so you can see it. If I say I want my top margin to be 75, when I do that, you'll see that now there is a margin space up here at the top of that content area. So I adjusted the spacing outside of that content area. Okay, so if I put it back to zero, you'll see it go back like that. Padding does the same thing except inside your content area. So if I add that same amount there, you can see that it kind of pushes your text down, but it does so within your content area. 
okay? I generally like to stick with using the inside um, portion, so I use padding more than margins, and that's what I'm gonna do in this case. All I'm doing is kind of just Margin and padding or something, they're kind of like discovery. Yeah, tools. you kind of have to. You just need to play with them a little yeah. bit and just learn how they react in different situations. Right. And don't be afraid of messing, messing it up. You can always reset it back to zero and yep. start fresh. Uh, one thing that I want to keep in mind is you have the ability to actually add negatives to each one of those. You don't want to do that. Uh, when you add in like a negative margin, what it'll end up doing is it'll shift your content in a way that when you're looking at it on smaller screens like a tablet or even a phone device, it's going to make it very, very difficult to actually effectively view that content. And even in some cases, if you drastically adjust the margins or spacing in a negative manner, it makes it really hard even to click on it to edit. Um, you, so, can, you can end up with overlapping items. Yeah. Um, so, so it's generally something that you just don't want to do. So, but in this case, for example, what I want to do is I want to move this text a little bit further down. So I'm going to add some top spacing here. And again, it's just trial and error. Um, the nice thing is you can see how it's going in real time as you do it. And you have the ability to do it one interval at a time if you want to. You can even manually type in numbers if you want. Um, I kind of like this general area. Um, it's not perfectly centered, but that's okay. I don't need it to be perfectly centered. Um, I just found a spot, kind of a happy medium that I'm okay with, and that's that. Um, I also generally like to do a little bit on the sides as well, just to kind of space things out a little bit, and then just to kind of even things out, I like to do the bottom as well. Adding padding to the bottom of your content can help in a mobile situation. Yeah. Um, like for example, if Alex can size down to a mobile. Yep. Just so we can kind of show what we're talking about. So if Alex didn't put padding at the bottom of his text, that image could possibly like be right at the bottom of, of your text right. and that's probably not what how you want it to look I'm yep. going to guess so, so to show what Jolene's talking about if I remove this padding here when you kind of look at it on a mobile device you see how that text is right up flush against this image um, well Alex also has one return in his text so yes. There are a couple of ways you can do it. When you're working with text, you can just add a return mm -hmm. in your text editor. That'll drop your cursor down. Or you can use um, the padding in the CSS editor. Yeah. So you can see what she's saying is here, I have an extra return. So if I didn't, my cursor ended right after the period. Now if I kind of shrink it down, you see how it's right up flush against that image. Like Jillian said, you can add a, a simple return like I did with your text, but you have a lot more control over that spacing if you use the padding settings. If you just hit a return, you're dependent on the font size and all that other stuff. Whereas if you use the padding, you can add as much or as little as you want. So in this case, I'm just doing something on the regular, relatively small side of 20 and just giving me just enough space when I view it on a, a mobile screen that it looks better. So that just you know reinforces the idea of when you're working on your website and you're making some changes, always be sure to keep checking it um, on your phone or you can size your um, browser window down just as Alex did and just make sure that it's looking good on a mobile device as well yep. because chances are a majority of your visitors are going to be coming from a phone or a tablet. Yep. And Kristen asks, how are you getting to the mobile view? I'm just simply making my browser window smaller. Um, the best way to do that is to actually just check on your phone. Um, even if your website's not live, if you type in your website address on your phone, you'll be able to view your website. Um, people can't search it on Google and so forth, but 
you can certainly pull up your website on a phone, on a tablet, anything you want, just by simply typing in your web address. So, <clears throat> All right, so that takes care of that top section. Um, next, we're going to move down into section two. I'm actually not going to do anything until we get down to section two, area two, which is right up here. Um, and then that, I'm going to take some additional text. So on this particular uh, template here, we have our HTML slider. Um, this is just the moving box of, of text that we have here. Um, when I go in to edit mode, I click on it, I can see there are three slides. Each one of these is just a text area. So it's just a way to take multiple webinars or multiple um, slides and add them together. Uh, Christy asks, how long is this webinar? Um, we're going to try to wrap it up as quickly as we can here because it's getting a little on the long side. But again, if you can't stick around, don't worry about it. You can always rewatch anything that you missed later on by viewing the video. So, um, so on this particular slider, um, I don't want to use slide one. Or I want to use slide one. I don't want to use this could want conversation conversation change your life because um, all that is is talking about scheduling and consultation, which I already have that on my page, so I can delete that slide. Um, not one diet I'm going to use. Uh, when is the last time you see, received the personal attention from someone? Um, I'm going to use that as well, but I'm going to actually take them out of the slider. So kind of what we're going to do is what we did before with the cheating is I'm going to take the information for my slide, clicking on that source code and just copying it. Now you could manually type this out if you wanted to, because it's a basic sentence, but this is a quick and easy way to do it. So I'm going to take a new text area and in my source code here, paste it in. So then I have, it looks the exact same as it did on my slide. So I can go ahead and save it. And I can do that very same thing with the other slide that I wanted to keep, which is when was the last time you received the personal attention? I'm gonna go into my source code. I'm gonna just simply copy this. And I'm gonna close that out. And actually what I'm gonna do is this, are you curious of how health coaching can help you? Um, I'm going to use this same text area. I'm just going to edit it. So I'm going to click on here. And if I go into my source code, I can just replace this with what I just copied. And I can choose to center my text like so. And I can save it. Give my page a quick refresh. Like so. So what I have here in section two is I have this little statement, no one diet works for everyone. I'm gonna click on here. The only thing that I want to do different is I want to make sure that I have the appropriate um, heading supplied. So instead of the H4, I'm gonna highlight this. I want this to be my heading three. And I want my heading three to be this book Antiqua. So that's the same setting that we had for our heading two. I want that same look and feel to it for the heading three. So that's where I'm going to, to change that. Um, the text I think is perfectly fine. Um, I will guide you to find the food and lifestyle choice that best support you. I will also help you make gradual lifelong changes that enable you to reach your current and future health goals. Perfect statement, I like it. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna get rid of this read more button by just deleting it. And then I'd save my change. I'm gonna refresh my page here. Um, I don't like this ugly green color that I have for my heading. So I'm gonna go into my heading three settings, which is right here. And for color, I'm just gonna use this 
kind of tealish blue color that we used before. And again, if I change it here, it's going to apply everywhere throughout the site. So if I just refresh my page, there's my, my statement that I can use. Um, this image of the woman, I don't want to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and just click delete and remove it from the page. Now this most approaches text I'm going to use, but not in this section. So I'm actually going to just take it and move it somewhere else for the time being. And we'll utilize it here in a moment. Uh, while I'm in edit mode, because I took two out of my three slides from my slider and moved them someplace else, I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to delete it from my page. Now, when it comes to these sliders, if you want to delete a slide, you want to make sure to click the trash can for that slide. You'll get the confirmation saying, do you want to delete this slide? Yes, that's okay. If you click delete from page, it will remove the entire slider. And again, as I mentioned, there's no undo feature. So if you want to delete it from your website completely, like I do right now, then you can click delete from page. But if you just want to delete a slide, just remember to click on the trash can for that specific slide. Uh, we get a lot of people that accidentally delete this from the page. And then there really isn't an easy way to go back and get it. Um, you have to go in and manually recreate it, which depends if you have a big slider with a lot of information, it can be kind of a pain. So you just want to make sure that you are absolutely doing what it is that you're at, it's asking you to do. So we're going to get rid of that section here. Um, and then this text right here, I'm actually going to move out of the way. And next up, we have our section two area eight. Um, in this, you'll see in section three here, I have a background image, this uh, berry image. I don't want to use that. So I'm actually going to click in here and click remove and then save my change. So when I refresh my page, that section is blank. Um, it just defaults to whatever background color it is, which in this case is white. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't want a background image in that section. I want to instead add a background image in my section two area eight. And I'm doing this just to kind of break up the page. So right now I have a lot of text and a white background, so it's very plain, but I'm just going to add a nice background image to kind of break it up a little bit. So I'm going to click on my blue notepad settings for that area, click on add background image. And in this particular one, I want to add in this image here. Um, I've already kind of sized it appropriately. So this one is just over 2000 pixels, which isn't, it's just fine. Um, as you only mentioned before, 2000 pixels is a really good kind of uh, sizing to go with. 2098 pixels, that 98 pixels isn't really going to make that much of a difference. Um, yeah, but that's acceptable. Just Yeah. If it was 2300 pixels, I'd want to resize it. Um, but like 2098 or 2100, that's, that's okay. Um, you're not really going to run into too many problems with that. It's a anywhere between 1600 and 2000 yeah. is, is a good range. Yeah. Give or take a few. So I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And just like we did before, we have our options, um, that we can set for, for our different things. I'm going to go and still go ahead with the cover and I'm going to go ahead with the center for my position. Now, if I go ahead and save this, you'll see that we don't see a lot of the background. Um, and if I go out of edit mode, we don't see it at all because I don't have any content in there, which is perfectly fine. But if I go back into my settings and I go to the spacing, this is where the spacing thing is kind of neat. I can actually just add in some padding and kind of expand that content area, even though I have nothing in it. Um, so I'm just going to do a little on the ridiculous side and put in 375 for the top. And I could put some on the bottom if I want to, but I don't have any content in it, so it really doesn't matter. And when I do that, I click Save and refresh my page. Then I kind of just have this nice little image break right in the middle of the page. And if I wanted to at some point, I could add in 
content to it if I want, but I don't. I'm just going to leave it here. So it's just kind of a nice little image to kind of break up the monotony of all the text on the page. Like so. As we move down to the rest of the page, um, I'm going to go into the section three here. Um, on this, I'm going to take my YouTube video and move it out of the way again. I'm going to take some of that other content that we had here. So our most approaches text, I'm going to put right up here. And then the, when is the last time you received the personal attention? I'm going to put right up here and kind of shift the way that that looks. And when I close out of edit mode, I have this enormous amount of space here. So what I want to do is just ensure that my settings for this section, if I click on here, you can see that if I go into spacing, I have a lot of spacing here. I don't need that. I can get rid of it or I can make it smaller. Um, in this case, I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Put a little on the top and a little on the bottom. So to space that out just a little bit, it looks like I have some extra spacing up here too that we can get rid of. I'm gonna refresh the page. Looks a little better. Um, now what I want to do to space out these two paragraphs, um, just kind of like what Jolene was talking about for an easy way to do that is to click on this and just add a return or two. And that's an easy way to kind of space that, that content out just a little. I also want to click on this here and I want to make this my heading three. And with my heading three, just like we talked about before, I want to change that font on a manual basis so it matches everything else. And lastly, I want to take this text and I can see that it's centered. And if I go into my settings here, there is a text setting here that is also aligning that. So I want to make sure that that's correct, like so. Um, I'm also seeing just a little bit of extra space up on the top here. And if I go into edit mode, what I can notice here is I have some space down here at the bottom of these two content areas. So I want to make sure that I don't have any spacing settings for those two areas. Sometimes your template will have that. I've moved content around from when I started, so I'm seeing that extra space there, so that's telling me that I have some settings there. Um, I can go through and manually change everything. Otherwise, I can click on the settings button and I can actually just reset everything back to nothing. And when you do that, you'll see that now everything is flush. Um, that's a really good indication that there's no settings applied to those areas because you're not seeing that extra space. So now I have this kind of a little bit more spaced out like I like. And then last but not least, we have our bottom section here. Um, section four, I'm gonna, I already have my YouTube video here. Um, I'm just gonna take my blog and put that here. Um, and with this, I'm going to go into my blog settings here and set it from the number of posts to display down to one. So this is just I was going to display the most recent blog post like so. And we're not seeing any text right now because of the settings that we have for our site. So to change that, I'm going to go into the section four and I don't want to add a background image, but this time I'm going to add a background color. And I'm going to do the same kind of gray that we had before. And you see when I do that, you can actually see the text show up for my blog. Go ahead and save that. Just 
give it a quick refresh. And kind of just like what we did up here with our spacing, I'm going to do the same thing in this and just move it down a little bit like so. And I can give each one of those sections a title. Um, I can simply just go into edit mode, take my text tool, pop in some text here, and say this is the organic blog. Um, I'm going to use heading four and center that text. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to just say this is videos. Set this as well to heading four and center it. And I can see here when I'm in edit mode, this one has some extra spacing on the top. That's because of the, uh, the settings that I have with it. Let's see, what do we do here? So, what I want to do actually, got ahead of myself here. I'm going to get rid of that setting and instead. Just do Jolene's little trick and add in a return. And that it's just way I, as easy sometimes. Yep, and that way I have those two text areas lined up nicely across each other. Then lastly, I'm going to go in and make sure that my typography settings for my heading four, I can set that text to white. save that change so I've gone through and I've adjusted the top section and just rearranged the content a little bit and now I have a completely different looking website with the same content but just a little bit more personalized and fitting more of what I want it to be for for my health coaching practice so any questions on anything that we did that I did there I know I kind of zipped through it a little bit, um, but again, it's it's all pretty simple. I mean, the, the really the tougher things are figuring out colors and pictures and stuff. The rest of it is kind of just like Jolene said, it's experimentation. You know, you you play around with the settings, you f you rearrange the things, and you just find what you think looks nice, and arrange things in a way that you know you think looks nice. That's essentially all it comes down to. So. Um, question, how do you change the video? And then Kim asked the question, can you add your own place, your own videos in place of the IN video? Yes, you can. And you don't have to use the video that comes with it. It's just there. I left it there as an example. Um, if you have your own YouTube channel or if you have your own videos on YouTube, um, it's super easy to change the videos. Um, all you have to do is to do that, you just add in your URL for a YouTube video. We recommend using YouTube um, for videos for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's going to provide the most reliable playback. You're not going to run into issues with people not having the right software on their computer or anything like that. Um, and two, it's going to play back the smoothest um, because it's being streamed from another source and they're not downloading it directly from your website. So. I would recommend setting up um, your own YouTube channel if that's something you plan on doing and uh, using videos on your website. Mm -hmm. And videos are very much like images. If you want to use a, vi a video, someone else's video, um, just check to make sure that you can get you get their permission for it. Um, you don't want to use videos that you don't have their permission for. Uh, most people aren't going to care especially when it comes to a YouTube video, because essentially what a YouTube video is, it's a link to their YouTube page. So for example, this is IN's video. It gives you the option to subscribe to their channel. If you click play and you click view on YouTube, it takes you to their YouTube page. So essentially you're just linking out to their stuff. So in most cases, people aren't going to mind. But you still, it never hurts to check to make sure that you have their permission. Now, if you wanted to change the video, for example, you wanted to add another video from IN, 
Um, because they provided that initial video, I'm, I'm fairly certain they wouldn't have any problems if you wanted to use a different one on their page. Uh, but again, you can always ask with them and, and just verify that it's not a problem. But if you wanted to change the video to something else, the process is super easy. You just find the video that you wanted to use and you just have to take the, the URL information from the top of the page. Uh, you can also get that when you click share. Either one is perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, the easiest way is just to go up here, copy it, and then go into edit mode and click on the YouTube video or use the YouTube tool if you don't have the video on your page um, and just simply paste in that information into that link like so and then save your change and then it links out to that video. One thing, Alex, can you go back into the settings for that YouTube video that I like to touch on? In the advanced tab yes there are some settings in the lower half of this window um, one recommendation i always make is um, to turn show related links off turn that to no um, because sometimes when your video is completed youtube will suggest other videos based on the video that you just watched and most of the time, it's not going to be your content. So that's not exactly what you're looking for. Um, so I would always make sure that's set to no. Otherwise, there are just some other, um, you know, display options there um, for that. You can, like I said, you can kind of go in and play around with it and just find this, the settings that you prefer the best. So, and again, you don't have to have a video section on it. I know like the Foodie Bonanza section has a video section that comes with it like this there these things are just there to kind of give you examples of what's possible if you don't want to have the video on your page you don't have to it's really not a problem at all so and then with the blog tool that's the in blog feed um the in blog feed um is an automated automated blog post that IEM publishes about once a month um that's what we have added here i haven't gone through and actually created blog posts um, so that's what that information is displaying. So, <clears throat> Question is, where can we find the replay of this? And as we are getting a little on the long side, we'll start to wrap up our section and hop into our Q&A. So this is a perfect segue for it. Um, our video of today's session, uh, which will be available later on this afternoon, if you go into the education portal, uh, which again, if you're logged into your site, you just click on the question mark right up here. Um, otherwise, it's just ineducation.liveatplatform.com. If you go into the solution section and go down to the health coach webinars, you can click into that and it'll be the right one right below webinar registration. So the fonts and colors that was last week's, um, today's will be right above that later on today. So you can uh, go back in and rewatch it. I would say by the end of the day for sure it'll be up. Um, so you can go in and, and rewatch anything that you need to again. So, uh, Alexis says, if we wanted to add the blog feed to our Facebook page, can we, and how do we, you cannot add the face, the IN blog feed to your Facebook page. You can certainly share the blog posts if you'd like to, um, but you won't have the ability to actually add that blog feed to your Facebook page because it's part of our blog service uh, application that's linked to your website. So, all right. Um, all right. So we covered a lot of stuff today. Um, the questions that came in, I think we are good to take care of them in our Q and A portion. Um, do we have any questions based on what we covered today? Um, I don't see anything that is explicitly about today. Um, but if you have any questions on what we did today, what we covered, um, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, we will wrap up our session for this week. Uh, we will be back with section with part four the Thursday after Thanksgiving. So not next week, but the week after we'll be back. Um, that week we'll do similar to what we did today. Uh, we'll talk about how to go through and change out the rest of the pages on the site. 
Uh, we won't go is as in depth with with it like we did with our homepage, but we'll cover some of the basics um, on changing some of the background page pictures and, and so forth, and how we can do that for the rest of the pages on the site. Um, and then we'll we'll work towards wrapping up our site um, the week after that. So we have two more sessions left um, of our series. So. But if we don't have any other questions relating to what we talked about today, um, I think we're going to go ahead and end our session. We, I do have a bunch of questions that are sitting in the Q&A. That's great. We're going to cover those. So if you if you submitted a question, just hang on, and we'll, we'll hop into our Q&A portion and take care of those. Um, but if you don't want to stick around for the Q&A, you are certainly free to hop off. Like I said, the video should be available later on this afternoon. Um, so you can go back and rewatch whatever um, whatever you need to. Um, and then, like I said, we won't have a webinar next week. We'll be back the week after Thanksgiving. But we'll send out the email notifications and so forth just like we we did before. So with that said, if, if you want to stick around for the Q&A, you certainly can. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great week. Enjoy the holiday weekend next weekend. And hopefully we will see you again next time. Thanks, everyone.